Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of Frank Kelly Frias, The Art of Science Fiction, introduction by Isaac Asimov, about 120 pages, predominantly in colour all the way through, as you can see there. This is from Donning, the book came out in 1977, and sadly, there's not more books by Frank Kelly Frias. I mean, I'm just looking over here and I've just got a list of, as he sees it, and apparently some comments made have said that there's a few bits of overlap with this book. I don't know if that's true. I haven't got the book, so I can't compare it to. And there's also a separate style. But I think even those ones are quite a few years ago. I mean, I'm just looking here. 1984 was that one. So the, as he sees it, was 2000, apparently 2000. But other than that, that's it. That is it. I mean, he's done lots and lots of work, mad covers, obviously loads and loads of science fiction covers. I would have thought someone would have brought out a collection of, of his work, a 400, 500 page massive tome. As you can see this size, it's, it's not very big. I mean, you're not talking a huge, I mean, it really would be nice to have. And I'm just gonna quickly show you a brilliant poster magazine. This one's a UK one. This was 1970s. This one, Science Fiction Monthly. And you can see the sort of thing what I mean. I mean, it'd be lovely if someone brought out a big book, this sort of size, you know, 300, 400 pages. Okay, well, probably it's going to be expensive. But I mean, if you want a really good, massive volume of his work, I would have thought that would be just brilliant. Anyway, it's just an odd uh, science fiction Monday. I don't know when this was. This is volume three, number two. And it's also got lots of other ones inside. So if I just quickly open that up, you can see sort of some examples. I mean, so you've got lovely posters there. And also it's got a lot of text as well. And also a bit of description. The Invisible Man, I remember that one from uh, David McCullough. So the book itself, let's just go through the book. It's, you can see it's a, it's a fairly thin book, which is such a pity. Yeah. There's all the details of various copyright things and stuff you've got. Got very good eyesight, just probably about to make all that out. It's very, very tiny. And there's a lot of text as well with all of the painting. Also some thumbnails of ones that, uh, so you've got some thumbnails there. They're not big format, these uh, things, it just obviously shows. And also quite a few black and white illustrations as well. So you've got some, and this one's from uh, Analog. <clears throat> there's quite a few Analog ones, these black and white illustrations, as well as very early ones as well. This one's from uh, The Piper, Weird Tales, November 1950. And you've got a lovely Piper there. I just think that's beautiful, that bit of artwork there. I love the Weird Tale covers. And you've got another Weird Tales one there. And then you've got also the complete astounding illustrator. And you've got uh, obviously some illustrations that he made there. And of course, some of the painting. This one's a record cover, Robert Heinlein. You've got some, another one, beautiful. I mean, this artwork is just good. And it also puts, quite often put, uh, obviously the covers, who it's by. Obviously the, uh, this one, Brian Stapleford. I remember that. Door, I love door books, absolutely great. They had some really great colours. And this one as well, this one's uh, Stone and Science Fiction March 1954. Got just a lovely cover there. And there's the cover, obviously, the one that's in the poster book. Got Red Beard one. There's just so many great covers all the way through this. And some classic ones, I remember that one, that's just classic. And also a lot of detail about behind the scenes. And the only criticism, slight criticism, is that even though it's great, he's actually got handwritten there. I must admit, some of it's quite uh, tricky to read. I'm thinking, what did he put there? It all sort of goes over, not always, but it's, uh, it's not as easy as just reading standard printed text when you're sort of reading his handwritten notes, it's, which is fine. It's a nice way of doing it, but it just does make it slightly harder to read sometimes, you think. There's a bit here, right? one of the most, and I can't make that out, Useful, I think. Oh yes, useful is. I'm very not very good reading. I'm just looking it up, and thinking. I would be hopeless reading manuscripts where I'm supposed to sort of transcribe it. I'd be completely work place if I was doing it. But you just got so many great pictures all the way through this. Anyway, lament Harlequin. This is the first book. Oh, this is it. The first book by the world's most renowned science fiction illustrator. So clearly, this is the first one. And um, well, obviously, that was the case, 1977. So it's. Um, 
I would love to see another volume, a couple of more volumes, nice thick volumes would be brilliant. But this is still a pretty, and this should be easily to find. You should be able to find this one quite easily. It's obviously out of print, it's been long out of print, but copies seem to be still readily available. So definitely worth checking out. I think this is just a beautiful, just absolutely glorious cover there. Tops in science fiction. Now, quite a lot of these cover. I would love to actually get the original books as well. This one's a collection of Mr. Earl Kemp, Laurie Lee of the Red Mist. Apparently it was on the uh, Tops in Science Fiction, obviously, 1953, Lee Brackett, as well as Ray Bradbury. Just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Totally recommended, love this book. So, brilliant. 